Oh, LinkedIn request from Nick Martin. Nah, ignore. All right, folks, it is data time. Welcome to our YouTube show where we find personal data sets and visualize them and, and help you draw insights from that data. I'm your host, Nick, and with me here in the studio is the illustrious Samir. Hello, folks. Today, I'm happy to say we are tackling our LinkedIn network data. LinkedIn, all right, all right. I should probably go quickly and respond to all those requests for connections in my LinkedIn account. Too late, already mapped. <laughs> okay, so Samir, let's get started. Uh, I believe you have downloaded all of my LinkedIn data. Tell us a bit about how hard that process was. Well, convincing you to give me your password took some time, but after that, it's actually really straightforward to get LinkedIn's data that they have about your own account. Um, all you do is log in um, to your account, go to your member data settings. As you can see, as I'll scroll down here, there's a button right there to get an archive of your data. Now you get immediately a lot of interesting information like your connections, but if you wait 24 hours, they'll send you another a tranche of uh, even more comprehensive and detailed information. All right, Samir, so we've got all of my LinkedIn data. What is a good tool that you'd recommend to visualize and make sense of this data? Well, there's lots of different ways we could take this. In this case, it's more or less a social network showing where your connections are. So I've been playing around recently with a brilliant new tool called uh, Kumu, which is actually a, a really easy tool to organize complex relationships uh, between different uh, entities like people, organizations, etc. But most importantly, it's really easy to use and it looks beautiful as well. Yeah, I'm really excited to check out Kumu. And um, as Samir is getting the demo ready, I did a bit of digging and apparently uh, Kumu is founded by two brothers who are from the island of Oahu. And Kumu apparently means source of wisdom. Interesting. And, and that, folks, by the way, is a nice little glimpse into uh, Nick's spare time as well. So. <laughs> Great. So, uh, Samir, once uh, we've got the LinkedIn data, how does it fare according to Samir's uh, notorious data cleaning score test? Well, um, this one's a bit tricky because as you saw, it's really easy to get that data, right? Um, but in order to get the data in a way that it kind of conforms with the, the right um, requirements of Kumu, this particular tool, it sure. takes a bit of work. So I'd give it maybe a two and a half out of five in this case. All right, sir, so let's dive on in. Uh, where do you want to start? Um, so let's go ahead and jump into Kumu's main platform. So once you log in, the first thing you get to do is create new projects. Projects are basically collections of maps and map views. Okay. Um, what you'll notice here, which is pretty interesting, after I enter a, a name, like let's say uh, Nick's LinkedIn connections, is that you can add descriptions, but also you can choose if you want it to be private or public. Now, um, like many other freemium services, this one will offer uh, some, for instance, in this case, only public data and visualizations for free. So yeah. that's what we'll tackle here. Once we do that, we hit create project and just wait for a couple of seconds. The next step will actually be to um, create a new map and then actually import and drag and drop that data. Mm -hmm. And the reason that why I wanted to show folks that is it's a real opportunity to see how easy this is. Sure. So they've started off with some templates for different types of analysis. Okay. Whether you want to do stakeholders, social networks or others. We'll jump into stakeholders, start a name here like Nick's LinkedIn connections. Okay. Create the map. It takes a couple of steps. And now what we're looking at is basically a window on the right where the kind of visualization will show up. Sure. Uh, an area on the left where you can have metadata about whatever's being selected. And on the far right, some settings, et cetera. But of course, the first thing we need, you might notice is missing. A is, data set. It is a data set. All right. Um, and so this is how easy it is. Once you've actually aligned the data set and done a bit of cleaning, it's as easy as drag and drops. So you'll see, I'll drag it in here and it does a bit of review and you can see right here, it says nice work, no errors found. Now it does take some time to figure out what that means. You can't have things like blank cells, et cetera, um, but it makes it also really intuitive when you have something wrong, it'll really show you what you're doing wrong. No, that's great. Useful. So you've gotten into the right format. It's now going to populate and really you've just dragged and dropped it in and we were able to already get uh, a pretty interesting data set. Absolutely, so you saw something happening there. Basically what was happening was it was populating all of those different nodes and elements directly into mm. Um, this interface right here, which gives you basically an interactive view um, of all of your different uh, connections. No, this is great. So what are we looking at? Some of those larger circles are places where uh, the majority of my contacts work, is that? Yeah, that's a good way of looking at it. So what I've done here is highlighted one specific grouping. In the middle, you can see a particular organization, in this oh, case, great. Department okay. of State. And then if, of course, if I click on the, um, the, the nodes going out of that, you get the people who work there. 
And like you say, as you can tell, when you kind of look at the whole view of everything, you seem to have a few organizations where you have quite a, quite a lot of people um, at those organizations, and then quite yeah. a few that are just two or three connections. Yeah, so these here, this would be State Department, probably uh, World Bank, uh, it looks like. And then that third one. Do you want to take a guess? Oh gosh, uh, USAID maybe. Yeah, there we go. USAID. Okay, so larger organizations. Not a huge surprise there. But tell us what else you can do with this. Well, this is really just the tip of the iceberg in terms yeah. of what you can do. One of the things that I really love about this tool is it's highly customizable. Mm. Um, if you go to the basic editor here, you can do things like change anything from the color and size and the shape of the nodes and the edges or the lines between the different nodes. Um, you can add rules so that you can say, for instance, certain pieces or elements, let's say organizations uh, that start with the letter U or everyone who is a uh, consultant, for instance, you can highlight them in different colors. You can also do some pretty sophisticated social network analysis as well when you start thinking about the different ways you can cluster your data. Mm. Um, so it's really powerful. And I'll show you what I did. Um, yeah, give us some examples of uh, after you've spent some time and polished it a bit. So you can see here um, a slightly different view, right? This yeah. is a shared map view of your this same data, but there's some colors here. And you can see what I've done is basically highlighted the, co the, the connection color corresponding, as you can see at the bottom left, with different titles. Wow, okay, so let's zoom in on one cluster. And we won't share names here, but maybe let's look at a specific organization. Sure, let's zoom into the World Bank, which we looked at a bit earlier. Um, you can see it's really easy to search what you're looking for here. Uh, and then when you click on it, it will zoom right in. Um, and that's a pretty useful tool, I'd say, um, for making it really easy to navigate, actually. Yeah, so here we are, look at this. So uh, already we can start to uh, see that there's quite a few consultants at the World Bank, uh, and we can actually start to see some of that. But I love your uh, color scheme here. And, uh, and so that was pretty easy to customize, uh, it seems like. Very easy to customize. And again, this really is tip of the iceberg. You can do a lot more in terms of showcasing different relationships, choosing what's highlighted when you cover certain elements and when yeah. you mouse over others. Yeah. Um, and you can add some of the metadata indirectly after you've uploaded your spreadsheet. I guess there's some options for how to uh, enhance the uh, interactiveness and, and some of the some of the data le levels and, and layers. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, one of the things and the last things that I wanted to show you, Nick, yeah. was um, what happens when we kind of go beyond just your connection data and yeah. then add in my own connection data as well. That's what really takes us to the next level of doing some sort of a social network analysis. Yeah. As well. So show me what you have in mind there. Wow. So here we go. Um, this is basically a map of both my LinkedIn connections and Nick's LinkedIn connections, which is pretty interesting. Can you guess which ones are which? I guess we'll let the audience decide first. <laughs> you get to decide. Um, um, but what, you can, what I want to point out here is it's so easy to add data. You can either kind of modify the original spreadsheet that you saw me drag and drop, or you can literally go in into this uh, interface and almost deal with a table within here where you can just add new rows of information. Let's say someone's missing yeah. or you want to emphasize certain things. Before I, we do that, it's almost kind of fun to even look at how the, the nodes are arranged. And one of the things we were talking about before and looking at this was that, um, so Nick over here, this is me. I am a more of a startup person who has lots of connections at many organizations, but fewer connections per organization and maybe more organizations, whereas you are a company man. You've worked at a few larger organizations but have more connections within fewer organizations. That really is an interesting story that comes out of this, just looking at how we're connected. Yeah, and what I want to emphasize is how little work was done to make this happen. Yeah. After adding in that extra data, we already got that insight, right. and that's thanks to some of the work that Kumi's doing in the background. All right, so let us zoom in on one of our shared connections and understand a little bit about um, the types of, of capabilities of, of Kumo. Certainly, so um, you can either zoom in and play around to see, for instance, who are these individuals that are kind of spread between you and sure, I. Sure, um, sure, sure. We, we know that we have one of our um, co-colleagues and friends, Adam, so let's zoom into what Adam's up to these days. Um, and what I wanted to point out here is there's a lot of metadata or additional information you can add incredible. to a particular person. Yeah, so you've actually gone in and added a photo uh, uh, automatically here and, and added some text as well. But imagine if you were really trying to build out this data set, you could do that for a number of different uh, variables. And, yeah, and absolutely. For those of you who are more technical, you could probably scrape, for instance, a lot of photos, biographical mm -hmm. data, Twitter handles, whatever it might be, and it's very customizable. In fact, even if you don't scrape it, you can manually go in in real time and add that data and it plugs into the table. Well, Samir, you have done it again, sir. Thank Impressive. Uh, very cool to see my data visualized. I feel like I want to spend hours on here really trying to understand uh, what else, uh, what other stories we can, can discover uh, and tell. So if you all liked this episode, we would love you uh, to subscribe and also send us your ideas for what else uh, you think we should cover. 
Sounds good. And we'll have more information in a blog post. Is that right, Samir? That's right. After this, I'll do a nice blog post that you, you can uh, follow along step by step to see how you can create something similar and, of course, comment on that with your own creations as well. All right, I'm going to go back and accept some LinkedIn requests uh, and, uh, and get busy with my map. Sounds good. All right, signing off.